Hey everybody, it's Doug here. Just looking at the town of Arkham as we venture through it trying to destroy the gate that will be opening for Ithaca by getting 11 Elder Signs, of which we currently have none. It's a tough world out there. Anyway, thanks for joining me tonight. Um, before we get started, I just want to talk about a thing or two, not about the game necessarily, but just about something to discuss. Now, you know, I, I play a lot of cooperative games, and I, I also watch people play games and stuff. And I was watching a, some folks play a cooperative game, and I noticed that the, there was a person at the table as being, you know, your typical alpha table gamer at the table and make, getting basically playing their own game while everybody else was watching and doing what they were told. So I have a general rule of th rule when I sit down with people and, to play a cooperative game, and I state it up front, and it kind of solves this problem for us. And I, I just let everybody know that in a cooperative game like this one, or like Sentinels of the Multiverse or something of that nature, I do not allow... My table rule on that is that you cannot offer any advice to a player unless they ask for it. You know, for the alpha male ga or alpha gamer or whatever, that might make them a little frustrated, but it doesn't make people mad. Uh, because the worst thing that you can do is sit down at a awesome game, a uh, cooperative game and get ready to play and then have somebody run the whole game. It's just not cool. Anyway, I'm not going to dwell on that, but please uh, comment on that. Let me know what you think. What do you do to curb the alpha gamer? Right? I've seen lots of posts on other threads about this. It's kind of interesting topic. But anyway, um, let me know what you think. Now, let's get going. So, as you recall, last turn, Vincent Lee died, or, or, or Kate Winthrop died, and Vincent Lee, the local doctor, came into play. But we're going to start with the very powerful and, and uh, doing well, Kate Winthrop, or I'm sorry, not Kate Winthrop, Trish Scarborough, who uh, has a great skill. She's a member of the Silver Twilight Lodge, and she's about to go join Skids O'Toole at, the, at Founders Rock to try and defeat that, uh, that location and solve the problem there. And it's going to be rough, I can tell you that right now. Good news is we have some things. She's got a clue token. She's healthy, she's got sanity, she's got a great skill that can help her get some some other re, some re-rolls and uh, yeah she's gonna do that. So here is Kate Scarborough and the first thing she's gonna do is tool on down. Now also with um, Skids there, remember they, he can help focus dice too so that's not a, a bad thing but uh, the first thing we're going to do is go to the dice bowl. Now let's just take a look again at the Founders Rock card see what we got here. It says, as I touch the cold, clammy surface of the stone, trying to get the glare off it for you, I sensed a great uh, darkness located, uh, yeah, locked away within. Pretty rough. Now, Kate is a member of the Silver Twilight Lodge, so she's going to get, uh, not Kate, I keep calling her Kate, Trish, she's going to get to avoid this first action and she only has to complete these two. That's going to be helpful. Let's go over to the dice bowl now. Oh, but wait, and before I forget, we do have to draw an event. So, uh, some, something else to remember in this, this version of the game. So these are both good and bad. I've had both of them now, so we'll see what this is. She draws turf wars. Another gang is moving into the Sheldon's territory and now violence reigns in the street. Lose one stamina if you're a member of the Sheldon game, gang lose two stamina instead. Well, she is not a member of the Sheldon gang. She is a member of the Silver Twilight Lodge. So before she even gets to start her quest here, she is going to take two damage. That leaves her at three. That's not where we wanted to go this turn, even though this card is not going to do her any damage. Now, again, being a member of the Silver Twilight Lodge, here I'm just going to put their little tokens right there and there so you can see them. She does not have to do that first one, so she only has to do the second one. Does she have any cards that can help her? Not, not really beyond that. Um, she does have this one, which will allow her to draw another investigator to her location. Then you and the investigator may trade. Well, it wouldn't be such a bad thing to draw Vincent Lee over there and trade the flamethrower. Because we need to complete this. This is important. It's got two Elder Signs on it. Or, uh, well, Skidzo Tool's already there. He's got a lucky cigarette case. Let me think on this just a moment. Well, it's not like we're going to consume the doctor's turn, and we definitely need to do this. So, she is first going to play her flare gun. This is a common item, so Ithic was uh, his ability to deal damage to an investigator using a unique item or spell will not come into effect. 
So we use that. That goes on the bottom of the common items deck. And we now have the good doctor here as well. And it, with the flare, it allows them to trade items. So um, we're going to trade this to Trish, the flamethrower, which will get used. It is a common item, and so I think with this one... The yellow die does not do us as much good as the red die will do. So it says plus one yellow or plus one red die. I think we're going to take the red die because the wild will allow, will give us better options to get these terror symbols. That's my guess, my hope anyway. Again, this is a common item, so it's not going to do anything to Trish uh, as far as taking damage. And that will just go on the bottom of the common item deck. Okay, now... Oh man, hold on. I just spilled the common items. <laughs> okay, back from the tragedy. That was not the end of the world, thank God. It was easy just to... Uh, the stack flew up. Okay, so here's all of our dice. We've got our red dice already in place. Um, I could wait and... No, no, I'm not going to take the chance. Not going to take the chance. And now we have two people that we can... Or three characters that can focus dice if we need to. Let's roll. Let's see if we get the first time out. We need to get a scroll. Oh look, we got this, this one down. Awesome. So now we just need, f so we got a, a scroll and a tear symbol there. That is good news. So now we just need to get a uh, five points of investigations and another tear symbol. Uh, that was about as bad a roll as it could be. Now let me think about this, because we do have stealth. Once during your turn, you may re-roll one die showing an investigation result. Okay, well we'll do that. Why not? Maybe it'd be something we can hold on to. So we roll that. A two, that's not that helpful. <laughs> Let me think. Let me think. I think we'll just get rid of a die and roll again. Sounds like the best option. Okay, well this is good. Okay, so we got a four uh, and a two. So we'll take two of these for... Man, I don't know if I want to do that. We need a five. Yeah. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep the red die for the... Well, let's think here. There's only one terror symbol on this, isn't there? And there's only one, well, it's, so it's not really going to matter, but we'll take these two just because the red die gives you the option of it wild. And so now we just need, um, man, got to get lucky here, guys, a terror symbol. No. Okay, we know we're not going to keep this one now again because I don't have anything I can do to re-roll. I already did the once per turn re-roll. Let's look at her ability. Okay, pop it up on the screen. When Trish fails to complete a task, she may lose one stamina and one sanity instead of setting... You know, but so before I set this die aside, she is going to do that and take another point of damage and another point of sanity. That will put her at uh, three damage. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this marker here. I also have a clue token. What am I doing? Totally messed up there. Okay. Well, it's okay. We still got three dice. We're, we're, we're locked in. And uh, she still has a clue token to use. So let's roll again. And we did it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we did finally complete this Founder's Rock mission. And we didn't even have to use anybody to focus. That is awesome. Awesomeness. Awesome sauce. All that good stuff. And we're going to get a unique item and two Elder Signs. So let's start taking care of this card. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the dice off it. And then we'll take all of the fine folks that were on the, at the Founder's Rock and we'll place them back on the streets of Arkham. Then give this to Trish for a trophy. That's going to give her four trophies she has right now. Um, as well as drop two Elder Signs onto the Ithaca card here. Boom! That is awesome. We only need nine more! <laughs> oh, uh, let me just make double check this one. What do we have here? All of the world cards getting the following effects. Okay, so we have to discard an, an ally or a clue to enter. So uh, we don't have to worry about that right now. And then she gets a draw from the deck of unique items. So here is that. Now we did not use an item, unique item next turn, so she did not take damage. Let's see what we get. We get a Ancient tablet that grants her one red die. Okay, well, she'll take it. That's not bad at all. And that is going to end... Uh, wait, we've got a couple more things to do, actually. Sorry. We're going to have to draw the next card. We get uh, Independent Square again. It's, it's, got a, it's a red card, meaning it's hard. It's also got a Midnight effect. At Midnight, remove one Elder Sign from the Ancient One's cards of Abel. God, I don't like those. That's twice we've had that come up. 
We've got to get rid of this card now and get it flipped over. And then last but not least, to top off Trisha's turn, we're going to move the clock. Now, we can't afford to leave that one, that independent square card there. Um, yeah, we, we cannot afford to leave it there. We're going to have to go take care of that before it gets... I was going to say we could get, let, it, let it get around to Trish, who has enough um, trophies to use the streets and discard one of the locations. We could have discarded it. Oh, brother, I don't know. Um, I think we're going to have to send Skids there. His poor Skids, he's, he's, uh, he had a rough last turn, used almost all the stuff he had. He's still got his lucky cigarette and whiskey, but I think he's going back to, even though we just took care of the rock, he's going to hang around Independence Square and, and deal with that. So I think that's what we're going to do. Okay, so Skids O'Toole here, he is going to go here to make sure we do not have this effect. We're going to flip that over. Too bad he's going to have to encounter it. So this is the gypsy curse. I'm sure this is not going to be good. Um, okay, what do we got here? It says the the old gypsy looked at me with loathing and cursed me with her, with foul and ancient words. Okay. Oh my gosh. Well, we locked the yellow and the red die on this card, so might as well get that out of the way, right? So there's the yellow die and the red die. Now this has a couple of effects on it and one of them looks like it's new so I think it's um, I believe it is new. Let's see here. That symbol, where are the symbols? Looking for the symbols, okay there we go. Um, yeah I don't know what that one is. <laughs> I have to look it up. I know it's, I can't remember what that one does. It does something obviously but it is not in the book so it's in one in the main book or something. Let me take a look at that. Okay, so interestingly, I thought this didn't use any of the abilities. So someone said, though, that there are ways to get cursed and blessed dice in this new expansion, and apparently there are, because this is from Unseen Forces. And it, it shows here, you can see the symbol I'm talking about is this one right there. It's the cursed dice. So if you fail this, this task, um, you're going to get cursed, and you're going to add a doom token. If we succeed, we're going to get another Elder Sign, a unique item, and a spell. So this is another tough one though for skids and he can't pull out a yellow die so let's go to the dice bowl. So we do have to remember that the red and yellow die are locked and we have to draw an event card. Let's see, hopefully it's something good. It's not. Unstable location. The air is crackling with static with a static charge and objects jitter and bounce as if possessed by an unseen force like maybe the gypsy witch that's cursing us. If add another world, no, good, lose one sanity, otherwise open a gate at this adventure, removing any seal tokens, and move to the corresponding other world, begin a new resolution phase. I, okay, this is conflicting. I don't know if I can do that, and I'll, I'll tell you why. It's locking the dice. Let me check something for a moment. Okay, no, nope, unfortunately, that just has to do with seal markers, so uh, uh, we're going to do this card. And... Skids doesn't have a... Oh, he's got an ally. Oh, no. I guess he's forced to go to this other world, which means... Oh, my gosh. This is so bad. Look, talk about set of circumstances. Uh, the current Mythos card says all the world cards gain the following entry effect in addition to any other entry effect. Entry, discard one ally or, or clue. He has no clues. He does have an ally. And again, going back to the event we just we just took, it says if at a okay, uh, otherwise open a gate at this adventure, removing any seal tokens, and move to the corresponding other world. Begin a new resolution phase there. So, let's go back to the table. This is like quadruply bad. I mean, it's locking both our dice up. Now we have to close the gate before we get that opportunity. So here's the gate for that, and we're going to draw another world card which will go right there with the yellow gate, but we might as well flip it over because we're going to deal with it. It is the the uh, city of the great race. So as we get sucked into this gate, it says, the, the bizarre conical being buzzed at me. Sorry, it's so hard to read these and keep them in camera because the print is awkward and small in my light. And I found to my horror that I understood its weird un undulations. Something had changed in me, perhaps forever, and the thought of getting, uh, the thought of, the thought greatly disturbed me. Okay, well this isn't the hardest one in the world, 
It's going to give us some good stuff, and we'll get to remove this gate. Let's hope that Skids has some good luck there, and let's go back to the dice bowl. Fortunately, this entry to the gate requires that I lose a ally or clue token. Skids does not have a clue token, so we're losing his awesome ally, which I've been relying on heavily, Anna Kozlo. Once per turn, Anna allows you to reroll up to two dice. That is a really good ally that we've lost. So uh, she got sucked through the gate and ended up someplace else, unfortunately. And Skids is left on his own to fend for his life in the City of the Great Race. Let's see if he can pull it off. Well, we shall see. Uh, you know, I do need his token in case we want to focus a die. Let's see what we get here. Well, oh man, look. We've got two of the necessary items, but I have no way to lock them up. And we did solve this one, though, so we might as well do that. We'll solve this. Oops. We will put as a three. This was a three. So we will solve this one there. And I guess we'll roll again. Hope we get lucky. Uh, oh, and we did. Oh, my gosh. Look, guys. woo -hoo. Okay, so we got the, the terror symbol, the scroll, and the skull. We have solved this mission in one go. That's awesome. Of course, he lost his ally doing it. However, we are going to get put both a Doom Token and a um, Elder Sign on the card, so we're pacing evenly. The problem with this Elder Sign is it also generates a monster, so uh, we'll have to deal with that. But we did solve the first of our, our great uh, our other world only encounters, so I'm going to put this over for him for a trophy. He's now got three. We'll put Skids back to the streets of the city of Arkham. Um, we will then uh, get his his rewards. So let's start with the uh, the easier part. I guess they're all easy right now. It's nothing that difficult. Anyway, here is our handy dandy elder sign that we're going to put on there to give us three elder signs, and boo our doom token, which will go right here now. Pointing out those for those people who don't know how to play the game or are trying to learn from these sessions, that symbol there uh, shows a monster symbol, which means that we have to draw a monster. Now, I have young children, so when I think of monsters, I think of something that terrorizes my dreams and makes gives me sleepless nights and funky, crazy songs in my head, and my children are fond of him, and I hate him. He is a creature from hell. I even saw the movie, and it freaked me out because it was very weird. Yes, the monster cup is SpongeBob. So, anyway, we're going to draw a monster from the cup. Let's see what we get. Hopefully nothing crazy but probably something really powerful. Okay, uh, we got this this thing here. It's a creature of some kind. Oops, let's see. A flying polyp. Okay, we, we've seen those in many of these games. Foolishly, I looked up to the source of the noise. It's a three-point trophy. That's pretty good. He's pretty tough, though. He, he takes just two investigations, but he does automatic damage. So now we have to think about where to place him. Well, that's actually easy. Let me show you. Whenever you have one of these white borders around a... a adventure that takes precedent now sometimes you just have a white border by itself sometimes it overlaps something so in this case we're going to overlap this with the flying polyp so at the curiosity shop the curiosity kills adventure there is a flying polyp there and I get to take these off of the adventure we were on didn't didn't stop didn't actually succeed at the adventure to remove the, the to get our two good dice back though and now we do get still a unique item to uh, use for skids and we get the prism of vision after a roll discard to change a die to the highest investigation result nice you may use this item on any investigators turn this is not a one-use item that's permanent that is sweet I like that unfortunately he's gonna take damage every time he uses it uh, due to Ithaca's ability uh, the freezing air around here seems to interact badly with unique items and spells so, anyway, we solved our mission. That is awesome. So, we, uh, Schizo Tool has succeeded, and we only have one thing left to do. We go on to the Doctor's turn anyway, and that is advance the clock one more. Now, we are going to um, have the clock advance uh, to midnight on the next turn. So, if there's any midnight effects we don't want, which actually there isn't, I, I don't mind the Witch's House, which puts out another uh, other world uh, location. Let me, uh, let me think about where we want to send the Doctor now. Vincent Lee, and we'll figure it out. Well, so we can't forget, of course, as we start Vincent Lee's turn, his ability says, 
at the start of Vincent's turn, he may restore one stamina to investigator of his choice. So he's going to restore a stamina point of of Trish's. There's the three that we took we had on her. We're going to replace that with just two tokens instead of a one three token. So she is a little bit healed. And then he is going to venture, I believe, to the Curiosity Kills location, take out this Flying Polyp, and then complete the mission. Well, that's my hope anyway. He's healthy enough to do that, and uh, he'll be okay. Not too worked up about his uh, survival of this. Um, so let's go to that, because see, he's, he's going to take a wound for stopping that, but he still needs to roll that. That's going to be rough. He has a spell. I mean, worst case scenario, he can do that too. He's got five total health. He'll be able to survive most of this if he succeeds, and he's going to get some good stuff. So that is where he's going to go. We're taking a little bit of a risk with the doctor, but I don't think it's that bad. It all depends on this thing here, which is going to be our event card. Remember, this symbol means we draw an event. Okay, let's draw our event card off the deck here. What do we get? Unexpected aid. You find the note shoved under your door when you wake up. You do not know who sent it, but the information in it contains cont contained it contains is value invaluable during the resolution phase add either one red die or one yellow die to your dice pool well we can't do that because they are currently locked up so that that netted out is a nothing but let's go to the dice bowl and continue on I'm not going to say that was even terrible why well, it would have been nice to get the red or yellow die in here um, it was better to have nothing than some of the events that we have had so anyway first we can do either of these in either order so let's see what we get. This is pretty tough. I don't know. We're, we're, it's going to be a rough one, I think. Let's see. Okay. Well, we did get two. So we took care of the flying polyp. That means that we take a health and a sanity damage for Vincent Lee. He's down to four health and four sanity. Okay, let's continue on. We need two skulls and a terror die. Let's see if we can do it. Well, we got, man, we got all investigation. That is awful. <laughs> I guess I'm looking at his stuff. He has no way to do anything about that. So we're just going to have to get rid of a die and keep going. Let's hope. At least we kill the monster. Well, we got two out of three ain't bad. Uh, but that's not going to help us too much. What can we do? What can we do? I can focus one of these. I'll focus this one. It's harder to get. Uh, we need... We need both of these to land exactly how they have or we fail the mission. Okay, we only got one of them. So there's really no way looking at cards and stuff. There's nothing he can do. So he failed the mission. It was, it was, a, it was pretty close, but he did fail. Um, which means he took three more damage, so he's at a total of four. You know, you notice I did not use his spell because if, he had, if I had used his spell, he would have died. And we don't want that. So... Uh, he does, however, get the benefit of slaying this monster, which actually makes this adventure tougher, which is one of the reasons... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I had this covering that. I didn't see the entry condition of losing a stamina. Wow. Um, man, this location is killer because that puts the doctor at five, unfortunately. Well, no sooner did we have the doctor that we lost him. Now I could say that I'm doing this all by myself, so it's tougher and I should cut myself some slack, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, so he's going to lose his cool trophy because he is dead. Man, wow, guys. Um, sorry, killing people off left and right. I mean, he had a chance. He almost had it, too. Well, say goodbye to Dr. Lee. Man, we're going to have to get revenge for a bunch of dead people. That adventure goes back to the board. And what happens next? Well, Vincent Lee is going to go away, as is his spell. His spell that he had is also going to go away, back to the spell deck. And we're going to draw another character. But before we do that, and I forget, because we had a death, we also have to put another Doom token. So now we have three Elder Signs and four Doom tokens, but the Ethical needs far less Doom tokens to awaken than we need Elder Signs. So, shuffle up these character cards just to give them a good randomization and see who we get next. Maybe we'll have better luck with the, the next one. This is our, I guess, our, um, our throwaway investigator. <laughs> I don't know. What do you got? We got John Culver. If I remember, he's okay. Strange luck. Once per turn, John may focus or assist even after a successful after a role in which the task 
is successfully completed. That's pretty good. And he also starts with a unique item. What does he start with? And a spell. So his unique item is the Ruby of Verlay, which gives him a red die. Of course, can't use it right now. And then his spell, which most a lot of spells, well, this one is different. Find Gate. Discard to draw other world adventure card and place it below the six normal adventure cards. Okay, that is Jim Culver. Now I need to find his token. And we're going to put his token up on the card, the Streets of Arkham, with the rest of the folks. And like I said, hopefully we'll have better luck with Mr. Culver. That would be awesome if we did. He's actually got six sanity and four health, so he's, he's not bad. He's not bad at all. Um, and then the last thing that we have to do for this turn, which was Dr. Lee's turn, and that is now Jim Culver's turn, is advance the clock to midnight. Ding! And which means we're going to get rid of this second of our Mythos cards and draw a new one and see what terrible things happen to us now. Stirring Darkness. Add one Doom token to the Doom track. If the investigators have more Elder Signs, then there are Doom tokens. Well, luckily we don't. Open the way. The next time the clock strike mid strikes midnight, a gate opens. Okay, I'll take that. That is okay. And so basically, guys, that is going to wrap up our turn. Another eventful turn and another loss of a great investigator. Vincent Lee is a good one because he can heal people. Uh, he barely got to do that before he met his demise at the Curiosity Store. Now, I can tell you one thing. Um, on the streets of Arkham, there is, it says, discard one Arkham card without a gate, a monster, lock die, or investigator. The, I think Curiosity Kills is going away. I don't like that card. It has defeated us twice. It is a three-point trophy, but we can maybe get something a little better. I don't know. We'll have to see. Also, I think I didn't... Sh I know I shuffled these, but it seems like these are clumped together, so I may give them a little shuffle again just to make it a little better for us. Okay, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you next time.